people of the interwebs, welcome back to my let's play of Threads of Fate for Orgognica, a really good old game no one cares about. I am WanderGirl108, and uh, we are playing as Mint. We just got through the tutorial section, so now we're actually out in the real area where things will try to bite us and hurt us and stuff. Uh, we have this polywog that tries to bite, but polywogs, they're, they're like grind fodder, basically. They're nothing more. They're, they're almost no threat. Um... This, tr this tree stump is hollow for a reason. Um, so yeah, I just got hurt for the first time in this let's play. See that? The red numbers mean I got hit. The blue numbers mean they got hit. And up here we have a saber tiger, which is awesome. And actually mildly dangerous at this point in the game. And... You see how my health just went up to- my max health just went up to 61? The more you get hurt, the higher your max HP goes. And also, um, the more magic you use, the higher your max magic goes. Oh my god, just die already! Okay, so we also have a jump attack. For Mint, it's just kick. And it looks kind of lame the way it's animated, but you know what? The impact as it hits the thing, that's nice. A and it also has knockback, so it like instantly stuns something. Um, standing attacks, one, two, one, two, three. And you can only get the three if there's something to hit. Yeah, see? And up here we have flowers that spit seeds at us that can't move. Another kind of grind fodder, the kind that you kill just to get something worth more money. And here we have this um, slime that is not deadly, it just slows us down. And we have the option of jumping along these stones, but we don't have to. In fact, I almost never do. Uh, slimy slime. <laughs> oh, I love this game. And polywogs are continuously respawning, if you couldn't tell. The saber tiger also continuously respawns, but there's only going to be one in this area, just like there are only two polywogs. And the magnolias don't respawn, I don't think, unless you, like, leave this area. Um, the game is fairly linear, I'll just throw that out there. Um, there are puzzles that are actually puzzles, which is nice. Um, about Mint's magic, they're actually used to solve puzzles more often than they are to, like, fight enemies. Like, you can, you, you can find your own playstyle, melee or magic, and puzzles require magic, mostly. So, you know, th there's not a, left, left, a lot left to guess at in this game, in terms of, like, gameplay. It's not that difficult if you know what you're doing, but, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, this game is gonna give you a really hard time, and, like, the New Game Plus mode is considered a boon by some people. I personally think it just ruins the point, but that's just because I know this game so well. Anyway, um, moving on to a cutscene. Not sure why she fell over. <laughs> have a girl. Wow.
she's running as random. I'm not sure. Okay, so this is a mini boss. <laughs> right off the bat here. And like I said, I've been playing Skyrim, so I need to like get rid of any notions of shielding and healing. Because <laughs> neither happens in this game. You're just basically supposed to think. Now, you only have to beat one of these guys. Um, but you do get a monster coin, and blood is worth more money than Smokey. So... I don't think I've ever had this go that well. Just try not to be too fancy with the combat is what I've learned. Dodge and hit. They would have eaten you! <laughs> like I said in the last video, like... When the guy was like, we ain't gonna hurt you, we just want a little food, that's all. I'm like, well, you're gonna, like, chop her up and cook her, so... Like, not because they're cannibals, but just, like, out of desperation type of thing. That, that was my thought process as a kid. Um, and I can't get it out of my head now. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, she has an ego. <laughs> yes, this girl is a ditz. Yes, Elena. Um, she she's a ditzy girl. Um, kind of hapless, but very sweet and innocent, as you'll see as we continue, because she's going to be one of the main characters. Every character in this game has personality. Every single one of them. Every single one has its own unique personality and themes. And is identifiable. None of the characters in this game are forgettable. Which, again, love this game. So this is the dialogue that happens if you don't ask around the um, town first. If you've seen... Again, my first Let's Play of this game is in the description. Um, and the first time I did a Let's Play as Mint, I, like, talked to everyone in town before I went out, and this dialogue is completely different. So, th this is what happens if you don't talk to anyone. And this line of dialogue happens um, even if you've talked to the person who tells you who Alina is, but you haven't talked to the person who explains about her parents, this dialogue is the same. So it's like there are two sections that can be changed. That's all. But still, pretty impressive for 2000 PS1. Yeah, this is a PS1 game from the year 2000, by the way. It's fantastic. What a coincidence! Again with the the. Whatever, I don't care.
again, with like the expression and the gestures, they're so minimal, but you know what they mean. You know her, like, <laughs> everything is going my way for once. You get that emotion just from like the like half-lidded eyes thing that they do. Um, okay, so here's a bit where there's no combat. You just have to go with Alina, and she's fast. If you can get to the end before her, you'll get a thing. I can't remember if I succeeded at getting the thing um, in my other Let's Play, so I might end up having the same flavor text twice instead of one and the other, which was my intention, because I meant to rewatch old videos just to like refresh what I did so I can try to do the other thing um, to get a more complete experience, but um, kind of flying blind with this one. so. Yeah, let's just race her. Yeah, see, she's like literally is a, a tiny bit faster than you. You cannot jump over this. But this is a shortcut that she won't take. Don't have to go just yet. I'm gonna show you. Um, this is the route she took, where she um, she jumped across these pillars, which I've never done until today. <laughs> this water slows you down, but whatever. And there's nothing else here really, so just a little bit of you know world. And I don't know what these signs mean. They don't have to mean anything. It's just awesome. It's just awesome. Right after five days. Yeah. Nice. Alina's so sweet. I could not read that name as a kid. I thought it was like Callus or something. happen in both storylines. Um, it's just whichever one you're playing as gets like the more important roles in the story. These are two sides of the same story. This is two pretty much different stories. Like you're going through the same places, but for the most part, but you're also not. <laughs> it's not the same. Which is awesome! They didn't reuse hardly anything. Well, okay, they reused a lot of things, but y you'll see what I mean, eventually. Oh, and things in parentheses are thoughts, by the way.
someone tell me how to pronounce that word? Atelier? Atelier? I have no idea, frankly. I'm assuming it's a Japanese thing. Um... I guess we'll see. Well, I, I guess I'll, I can always check the internet. Anyway. <laughs> that is a sheer wall. There's no texture because this is origami style graphics. And somehow managed to get back up here. First time I realized this when she's saying don't ever be that reckless I always thought because I kind of skim read I always thought she said don't be ever be that reckless again as in don't ever come out here in the forest again but she's talking about what Mint just did so yeah every time I do a let's play of a game I figure out new things about it also Elena's eyebrows are dark but her hair is pink did she dye her hair I mean no one naturally has pink hair in the real world, but this is Jap this is Japanese, so. Anyway, there is no fall damage in this game, which is fantastic. Um except in specific areas, but you'll always be able to tell what those areas are. This is a platformer. Um we are now on a cliff. And just look at this rock texture. For lack of a better word. It's it's so incredibly simplistic. It, like I said, it's a flat surface with all these cracks and textures just drawn on. Like a flat surface. But it's really effective at conveying the idea. This is a rocky cliff. You know? Now, you don't increase your strength. Um by attacking things, or your defense by getting hit. Just your health, just your health. Um, I missed a creature up there, damn it. Uh, and you can't go up this place, you can only go down. They, they don't provide paths for... Well, I mean, you can go up like here, for example. But they don't provide paths to go up to places you might have missed. Dang it. Basically, this is a path downward instead of forward, which is neat. Um, and into the forest. Uh, now you see these blue sparkles. Those blue sparkles generally mean health restoration, um, as they do in this case. Uh, hello. That symbol there. The, I'm pointing to it with an annotation right now. That, like, rainbow symbol? That shows up later. But this is the only time I've noticed that. Like, another... There's a place where symbols happen, and I've seen them re... I've seen one of them reoccur in another place. This is the only time I've noticed that that one reoccurs as well. It's fascinating. There's a hill here for some reason. And, of course, we have invisible walls, but it's PS1, you know? Even Skyrim has invisible walls. But, I mean, th 
the, in PS1, they have an excuse. They can't really render much more. Because they've packed so much. Like, they've spread it really thin, but they've spread it really far as well. Um, and they've sacrificed detail for mass and size. So anyway, we have to go up to this thing and just examine it. Now, suddenly, there are gargoyles. Now, with Rue, this puzzle is actually a puzzle. With Mint, it's just um, kill both of them because they respawn, like so. Um, kill both of them before either one of them gets up, basically. That's how this goes. Uh, why would you want to do that? I mean, you, you get a lot of money for these. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're doing a Let's Play, in which case you very much want to be done with these. Uh, and they don't give you much time, so you have to be pretty, like, even in how you attack them. Which I'm not doing, obviously. Um, they have a set pattern. They come towards you, jump, scratch, shout. Um, every creature in this game, except for bosses, has two attacks, plus a plus a jump attack in most cases, um, including playable characters. So with Mint, you know, there's melee attack, magic attack, um, by denoted by square and circle respectively. No, square and triangle respectively. And every creature has a similar thing, like a normal attack and a special attack. It's not always that cut and dry as to which one's normal and which one's special. Sometimes both are normal, sometimes both are special. Um, but you will notice this. That we're pretty much on an even playing field with the monsters in this game. Which... Because every monster in this game is also memorable. Every single one of them is... Basically, these are treated like characters. For lack of a better way of putting it. Oh, so close. Oh, come on! I had that. Alright. I just pressed circle to try to, um, pause the game and select because Skyrim. Damn you, Skyrim! Uh, come on. Get close so I can hit you both. Oh, come on. Come on, game. Yeah, this one's kind of annoying. Um, but it's doable. Yes! There we go. And this staircase magically appears. And of course, we just run right up it. Whee! <sighs> they do this in cutscenes. Well, cutscenes, for lack of a better word, even though in the game, you know, as you're playing, your character never gets tired, because video game. It's just how it goes in video games, you know? So she's fine. Look at my shadow. Perfect. Don't you think? Mint's shadow. Shadow mechanic in this game. It's just perfect. It's not trying to be too realistic. It's just trying to do a job. And it does. See, the thing is, this game doesn't aim for realism. It just aims to convey ideas. In terms of graphics, 
and instead all the focus is on other things like characters and story and gameplay. And the controls are very responsive. Um, like sometimes you'll play floaty games where button presses don't really seem to correlate with what you do, but this game it obeys you perfectly. Um, for the most part, like sometimes if you're running off an edge you can jump just a little bit too late for it to register that you're on something you can jump off of. But for the most part, you feel very in control, and it's very immersive in just how responsive it is, you know? There's nothing to take you out of the experience. Anyway... Boss fight! with feet and toes. So yeah, this is the first boss in the game. Uh, magic's probably the best way to do this. And if he runs you over, do the thing, please. Okay. Um, please do the thing. Whee! That's another thing he can do, is he can throw you. He can also jump anywhere on the field here. Um, you can hit him at any time, he's not invincible at any point, but most of the time it's best to just be out of his way. <laughs> um, this music, uh, it's not my favorite track in the game. It's the boss fight music. Like, it's just... Also, we have a health bar. That's what denotes a true boss fight, It's that health bar. Whee! <laughs> probably gonna fail this. Um, but then I can show you the game over screen. Or the, you know, you died screen, I guess. Because those coins, bronze, silver, gold, and also platinum, they're continues, um, as the tutorial mentioned. Anyway, this music, um, not my favorite track in the game, but that just reminds me, this game's soundtrack is on iTunes. Um, and it's fantastic. I love this soundtrack with a passion. I am almost dead. Um, and it's on iTunes. That also means YouTube is going to probably get in, get like, under, on my back about putting copyrighted, playing copyrighted music in a video. So I'm gonna, like, put a link to the iTunes, um, thing. Uh, this thing on iTunes in the uh, in the description as well as the playlist for my previous Let's Play. And you will have noticed by now, um, every time the, the soundtrack changes, I will put an annotation on the screen saying the name of the track. Every time something new happens, if it's happened before, I'm not going to put it back up. But just so that, you know, credit is given your credit. And he despawns. So yeah, now let's go inside. It's much bigger on the inside than it is on the outside, because this is a video game. <laughs> it's only trying to do a job. So there's stuff. All kinds of stuff. We have here a globe. Um, not sure what these chains are. This vault is how we uh, cancel this free roam bit. Hourglass. Um, treasure chest here. Funny story, I didn't find this treasure chest on my own. I was playing it, demonstrating it for some of my friends, um, who are no longer my friends and haven't been for many years. Sad story, not gonna go over it. Um, but I was playing it to demonstrate it to them, and they're the ones who noticed it. I literally did not see that, and they were just like, hey look right there, there's a chest right there. I'm like, where? <laughs> so, Swerdlows, thank you for that, if you ever see this. We have books. Well, we have flat surfaces with the texture of a bookshelf drawn on them. But you can see, this is supposed to be a library, basically. Silver coin. This is a door, somehow. And a treasure chest here. 
Moonstone. That might sound impressive, but it has no use in the game, except to be sold for money. It can't be used for anything. That, that is confirmed. There is no point in these stones, except that they are worth money. And money is nice, because money is how you upgrade your powers, not through experience. Um, how you increase your strength and defense, instead of just your health. Anyway, that's everything here. everything. Blow it up. <laughs> All of a sudden, for a completely random time. Just so happened to correlate with her killing the boss. Which, by the way, if he'd even gotten here and there was a boss, he wouldn't have been able to fight it, so... Very convenient. But, I mean... There's gonna be a lot of stupid, convenient, like, ex machinas in this game. It's a JRPG from the year 2000. Come on. You know? Let it go. Anyway. Nothing wrong with being passionate. Again, parentheses mean thoughts. She didn't say that. dance she's doing as well. That's her happy dance. Try doing that in real life. I think you'll find your body cannot make that movement at all. But you know what it means. It's very obvious what it means. I love it. Oh. Yeah. Aeons. They're... The mythical creatures of this world, basically. Except that they have- they're just legends. There you go, that's where relics come from. Presumably there are many relics in the East Heaven Kingdom. Did they say it was called the East Heaven Kingdom, by the way? Because if so, I want to clarify, that's heaven as in the sky, not as in the afterlife. Um, that, that's kind of apparent from iTunes. Uh, I'm gonna mention the iTunes thing again right now, because I just remembered something else I wanted to point out. Um, iTunes and Wikipedia disagree on the names of these tracks, 
And while I know that Wikipedia isn't reliable per se, there is something, one weird, weird discrepancy between the names on iTunes and the names on Wikipedia that make me actually trust Wikipedia more. Um, see that boss fight music? Th that was why it reminded me to say. Um, iTunes calls it Song of Sorrow. Uh, Wikipedia calls it Roadblock. Now, that might seem fine, except there's another so track called Song of Sorrow that Wikipedia also calls Song of Sorrow, which means there are two th songs named, two tracks named Song of Sorrow on, on the iTunes list of these songs. So, you know, that's interesting. Anyway, well, how did I even get on that subject from here? that. I want to throw that out there right now. How did he know that? My theory? This is kind of an allusion to the fact that there's a different storyline. So, like, maybe the Ruse story happened first? Obviously, there's no, chronolo there's no chronology to it. It's one story or the other, but I think... That's a reference to the fact that in Rue's story, when they when Mint is here, she says, I'm going to rule the world. Um, just trying to connect the two stories, I guess. brat. <laughs> ha ha, meant to the lazy brat who doesn't do work. Don't you think you're kind of pushing the point? Also, uh, there's so many things I want to say. The thing about Mint, um, uh, let, let me finish this cutscene. why the text box had to be that big. Guessing it's something Japanese. pretty much do as we please. I don't know if we can go back out. No, we cannot. Um, not yet. But I was gonna say, about Mint, um, losing her right to the throne because she's a brat, did no one, did her father and, like, the court and her, I don't know who Gramps is, I, don't, I doubt he's actually her grandfather. Her babysitter, maybe? Uh, or, I, I don't know. Did they never think to, like, discipline her when she started to turn into a brat? Like, I mean, did they just let her run amok and then say, okay, you can't be queen anymore, instead of, you know, you're not supposed to act like this. Kind of, kind of a sudden jump is what I'm saying. Um, I, I think they were kind of abrupt in taking away her right to the throne. I mean, she is a brat, but 
you know. She's ambitious. <laughs> I'd say she probably, I, I don't know why I'm going to this, but in Harry Potter, if she went to Hogwarts, she'd be in Slytherin. Definitely. Not because she's a bad person, but because she's just ambitious and greedy, to be frank. Um, anyway, this is a small town, but every character has personality, and I think... No, but I'm pretty sure there is something over here now. Where the sparkles are changes depending on where you are in the story. Yep, see? I know that one. I haven't memorized where most of the coins are. That's the only thing in this game that I haven't memorized. Um, because I, I never really needed them. Or even when I did, I just... Ooh, flavor text. Okay, I'm guessing that's what he would have said earlier, too. <sighs> what am I doing? Also, that's water. Right there. It's not moving. It's very still. But it's supposed to be the ocean. But, I mean, you, you get the point. There are no, like, moving graphics. I mean, obviously, the characters have, like, hair and clothing that move slightly at all times. But, for the most part, backgrounds don't move. I'm guess that, guessing they were just saving disc, disc space to focus on the more important things. Um, okay, so up here we have a church. Just so you can see. If you pray, and then he says, would you like to make, a, to make a donation, and then you make a donation, he will give you coins of life, depending on how much you give. Um, I think it's ten bronze coins, five silver coins, two or three gold coins, or one platinum coin. Depending. Uh, this is a hotel. Which we're not going to stay in. That little sw silver scrolly thing in the top right-hand corner means you can rotate the camera with L1 and R1 in this particular situation. So, can I think you? That guy's Markham, I think. Yes. Hmm. I hope you do. Rod becomes important later. There are some random NPCs that are never really important, per se. Um... Here are the stones. Yep. And same with monster coins. Apart from having souvenirs, there's really no point. Aha! Uh -huh. That's an important tip, too. Um... So yeah, that's some interesting stuff. This is a shop, and here I'm going to show you the thing. Tonio. 
Okay, so he sells bracers and belts. Now, I didn't know this the first time I played this game. I didn't know about this at all. So I never bought any of these. And I hit a wall. You need to know how to hit stronger and take more hits. Uh, so here we have monsters. And you can only sell them all. You can't pick and choose which ones you want to sell. Um, which kind of sucks, especially considering that later having certain enemies is actually... There's actually a point to it. But I'm just going to sell them all. And we have moonstones here. Might as well. And I'm not going to buy his stuff because... I'm not, honestly, I'm not entirely sure exactly how much it matters. What he said that, like, there are some monsters that don't, that won't take more damage just because you have bracers. And I don't know how much it matters, but this guy here, Hobbs. First of all, you can sell your coins to him, but not Tonio. And also, he will raise your base stats for a boatload of money, as you can see. But there is a way to get a discount. Um, and I always go to him to raise my base stats instead of um, raising my bonus. See, so if you see here, see that 24 plus 000, those, and 16 plus 000? Um, the plus, racers and belts put numbers in the plus area. Whereas raising your base stats is the 24 and 16, you can raise those numbers too. The platinum coin, you can never find, you can only get it by doing certain things. It raise, it doesn't just bring you back to life, it also raises your health, base strength and base defense by one. Uh, which is why it's so rare. I wasn't talking to Jargon, I was talking to... Um... You. Hey. Girl. No, not you. No! I'm trying to talk to... Annette. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, this is a tavern, by the way. Um... Ah, oh, this video is going on long. I'm so sorry. I just... I, I don't want to stop talking about this game. I love it. I love it to death. Um... But there's only one more place to talk about, so... This dude. This is Rod. abdomen is bare. I've always been confused about his outfit. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. This is a really passionate guy, by the way.
this is a grind, basically. I'll just pay and fight just to show you. It's not really. Oh, ha! <laughs> I didn't even heal. It, this really is just a sword, but it's the way he fights that makes it more than that. Yeah, see, but. So losing to him leaves you with one health. So if you don't heal, see? So if you don't heal after you lose to him, you're making a mistake. <laughs> I don't know if recovering and registering works, so I'm just going to recover and register. I'm going to recover and then I'm going to register. This is how you save the game. And that's the last point I'm going to make tonight. Um, files are really old. Um, you cannot save any time. There are, I think, four save points in the entire game, and three of them are circumstantial. Two of them are only at the very, very, very end of the game as well. So this is the only place you can rely on to save your game. And that can lead to some, uh, Difficult situations, especially when it comes to making Let's Plays. So... Okay. Now you see those two little icons on the right there? One of them is Rue and one of the, them is Mint. It took me forever to figure that out. So yes, once you beat the game as one character, one icon lights up, and then you get to play as the other on the same save file. And if you beat both storylines in the same save file, you do get a post-game bonus, as well as the new game plus. Oh. And I'm gonna show you that too, eventually. In the distant future. Um, so, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna stop talking now, because if I don't, I might not ever stop. So, <laughs> so thank you so very much for watching if you did. I really, really do appreciate it. And I cannot wait to see you next time.